Hello, 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 everybody. Happy TVU Thursday. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Black Umbrella. Oh, and um, We are your hosts. I'm Frenchie. I'm Nika. And I'm Wes. Y'all, yeah. how are we feeling today? <sighs> We're, we're getting up that road. What is that? <laughs> Climbing up the hill, honey. Yeah, hey, running up the hill. Running up the hill is what mm. I, that's how I'm feeling. I was below the hill. Not below. I was below in the bunker, in the, the in the storm. <laughs> I was in the storm shelter. I was below. Mm. Chowchilla is what I was. Chowchilla. <laughs> yeah, those who know, know. But I was literally Chowchilla mm, all me? week last week. So I'm just trying to. Buried. Get, get out! I'm trying to get out of my bunker, honey. I'm trying to get out of my bunker because it was it was a rough Ooh. week. Me and Wes watched Chowchilla this week, and <sighs> what a story! It Whoa! Is. For those who don't know, it's on HBO Max. Chowchilla. It's a documentary, so if you mm-hmm. want to check it out, check it out. But basically, kidnapped 27 kids from couldn't a, find them from a yellow bus. Couldn't find them. They was underground mm-hmm. for like 36 hours. Yeah, and the rest you'll learn if you watch it. So yeah. Hey, that it. that alone should make you be like, let me go see what the hell this is Literally. Mm-hmm. And Shao Chilla is in California, just so you know. Yep. In like the middle California part where nobody goes. Yeah. Central. No Central. One, no one lives in Central. Right? Well, hey, people do. Well, clearly they do. And look what they're doing while they're there. All right, now. <laughs> the 70s were a rough time. No. The 70s were a rough time, babes. They were. Definitely. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, should I begin to our word of the day? You're. Let's do it. Let's do it. And yes. She is a bitch. B I C T H. In that order. Hmm. Hey, the word of the day is nepotism. Mm. Mm. Nepotism. I'm a fan. Nepotism. Favoritism as an appointment to a job based on kinship. So, my question is. Who is your favorite Nepo baby? I know mine, baby. Oh, hey. My favorite Nepo baby is Tracy Ellis Ross. Oh, that's a good that one. That is my favorite Nepo baby. Classic. Yeah. Because you're like, I know you got on because of who your mama is, but you're so undeniable in what you do that people cannot grab at that for why you are where you are like mm-hmm. yeah she's excellent in all she does so mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. mine is hazel monet oh Ooh, yes. that's a good one hazel is my favorite nepo baby a new nepo, a new nepo. hazel is talent okay i mean mm-hmm. came out the home with talent the you understand the whole the so naturally i just can't wait to see what hazel brings to this world so mm-hmm. yes that's my fave oh that's a good one mm-hmm. Can we not it? um alex isley Oh, that's oh, a good that's one. A, yeah. That's a good one. That's a singer. Yeah. That's she, a she singer. Sings, she sings. She sings. She sings. She's she's she's, she's the one. She's mm-hmm. she's the moment. We love Alex Isley. <laughs> we love Isley Alex Isley. <laughs> yeah. Isley. My bad. <laughs> Isley. I was, I was like, who's like, Isley? I was like, hey, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> William Isla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, mm-hmm. go nepotism. Woo. <laughs> Here for it, especially for black people. Love yes. that shit. You the black me? people, yeah. We all name skin folk. Did. Yeah. <laughs> Did. So get it together. Not <laughs> get it together. Just that's saying. why that's why we gotta get on so that when we have babies, we can have an like, I would love to be a Nepo parent. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, like, it's, 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 it's in our destiny. What? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's my child, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, are you Frenchie's daughter? Are you Frenchie's son? Yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my mom. <laughs> Has some creative ass names. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just saying. Anjanu. Anjanu is a good name. Mm-hmm. I know. That's a good one. Because we got um, on. Anjanu Alice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Love her. Yeah. That's Love the, her. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good name. <laughs> um. Uh, Let's get into for the birds. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. I'm Frenchie, and let's get into for the birds. <laughs> uh, for the birds is where I look at Twitter. I see what's going on, what's popping, what's going down, and we talk about it. Ciao. 
Chill up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are retiring child. Bye. We're picking up child. Chill, Chill up. <laughs> I want to start this for the birds off talking about something that many people probably think that they encounter, but I don't really think anyone has encountered it quite like this before. I want to talk about throwing away your future. Oh. oh. Okay. Fuck. Many people think that they do this, right? Like this is getting deep. Some people are like, "Oh, you know, man, you're you're gonna throw away your future if you're out here, blah 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 blah." But let me tell you what was going on with this woman. Okay, so there was a woman who had uh, filed like an insurance claim. Um, I don't know exactly what the claim was for. Um, but she was unable to work because of it, right? She had a good lawyer, took it to court and all that good stuff, and she won the case. And she was awarded $823,000 from oh, this hell, case. That's a good penny right there. That is, that is life-changing Talk money. Talk about Napo, baby. Hey. <laughs> Damn near became a millionaire because she got hurt and couldn't work for, for years. Actually, she couldn't work for years, right? Hey. Um, homegirl wins this case. She is feeling good. Absolutely. She's feeling good, especially because the holidays are coming up. You know, so it's like, oh, great. Like, not only do I not have to worry about this headache of this case, I might have some money coming in soon. So, you know, maybe I can spend a little bit more here or there or, you know, just spread my cheer. Yeah, Yeah, spread the cheer. And she decided she was really going to get into the Christmas spirit and she was going to get involved into some Christmas games, some Christmas competitions. Christmas cakes. Christmas cakes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there was one thing that she said, I cannot deny this. I have to do this for Christmas. Uh She entered into a Christmas tree throwing. Yes. Christmas tree throwing competition. Not only did she enter this competition, but there is photographic evidence of homegirl slinging. Chucking trees. Full pie Chuck Christmas trees. Chuck and trees. <laughs> Across a field. Wow. What? Across and a field. Baby, it's not just one photo. Oh, she's got a, <laughs> a plethora. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple photos. A gallery, if you will. Girl. A gallery, if you will. They got her from the back, the front, the side. <laughs> baby, you, she cannot. The motion. The motion. <laughs> The form. The force on the face. Good of form. Like, good form. Mm, you know, oh, even sh- a throw like. Mm. Yeah. They got oh. it all. They got homegirls slinging Christmas trees. <laughs> wow. And a photo. <laughs> not not too soon after she wins $823,000 in an injury claim case that she claimed she couldn't work for five years because of this. Oh, I know. Oh, they no. came and they snatched that money oh, from yeah. surface. Oh, oh How was she ever yeah. do that? They came immediately for homegirl. Oh. And so she ended up losing her entire settlement. Damn. She was chucking trees, bitch. Cause you was chucking trees. You, I, uh, you hey. messed that up for yourself. No, you babe. really did. I don't understand how, especially whenever you know that. I mean, a court case is a court case too, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So for you to have your claim and you to win the claim, that's a huge amount of money to win. That's mm-hmm. a huge amount of money for a company mm-hmm. to, to just up. paying out. So you know they're gonna have hawks on you. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be following you to the grocery store. I mean, they're gonna have, they'll be trailing you the whole. Yes. First of all, the whole case and after the case for a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for <laughs> you to make it so easy, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> You're slinging Christmas yeah. trees mm-hmm. across a. Field. I'm mm-hmm. talking trunks and pine needles. Yeah. Healthy. Well. Ready to take home with your Christmas tree. Hold on. What? This is a competition. Yeah, yeah. It's a competition. Did she at least win <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas tree? Con- I mean, uh, you got to You have to walk away with something. Mm, if that's... you're not going to walk away with your money, um, I'm going to need this to have one. She did win the competition. Uh, all right. Oh, well, okay. you know what? What yeah. was the prize? Do we know? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I see. I see that 
uh, the injury claim was because she had gotten to a car accident in mm. 2017. Okay. And then, um, yeah, homegirl entered that. Damn! <laughs> homegirl won and then went to the damn tree throwing and lost it what? all. But she won the competition at least. 2017 However, is a long time. Yeah. So I really felt like she really thought maybe because <laughs> to be holding on to that injury. I mean, you know, I don't know the extent of her injury, so let me not. Mm-hmm. But, but the bitch can throw a tree, so I'm not about to. <laughs> yes. I'm not about to be she up here like, hey, uh, they were. If she can throw a tree. I feel like they were five foot spruces. So <laughs> okay, about about the same size as her. Right. Yeah. So my, so my big thing is, <laughs> if you can throw a tree, you're you're not. As injured as you as you claim to be, nowhere mm. near. Maybe you were in 2017. Totally yeah. valid. We're in 2024. Oh no 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 no. Oh, what? See the story is that in 2017 she got into the crash and that she um. I guess I guess the case finished up within that same time, and then January 2018 she started chucking. Oh, so this is a. <laughs> Oh, this is, a, this is a throwback. This is a throwback. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is a throwback. Well, damn, girl, that's on mm-hmm. you. That's on you, honey. That's on you. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because <laughs> you got to be smarter than that. Let me tell you, if I have any kind of insurance claim, anything, mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't have any social media. No. <laughs> I'd be right here on this mic to talk to y'all every single week. And that's, <laughs> all, that's all you'll see with me. Braced up. You wouldn't see me doing anything else until everything gets settled. And it's been a year or two after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I'll start living different though. Know that so <laughs> there will be signs. There will be signs. <laughs> there will be signs. Okay. There will be signs. Okay. So I just read it just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it seems like what had happened was yes. 2017 car accident. She said, oh, my God, I'm fucked up. Yeah. I can't work. She hasn't worked for five years since then. Okay. In 2018, though, even while the case was still ongoing, mm-hmm. or maybe they wrapped it up. I don't know. They didn't really clarify or specify that. But um, in 2018 is when she, well, I guess that would mean that now is when the case is getting wrapped up because they brought the photo up from evidence. 2018 the as evidence, evidence mm. for why she ain't messed up mm. and it probably took longer because of covid yeah that's yeah. probably what happened yeah that's probably wow. what happened damn girl it's all right hey listen you're living in it wasn't for you no now <laughs> let me tell you not. something <laughs> <laughs> i know better than to fuck that shit <laughs> couldn't couldn't okay. have Mm, that's a damn shame. Speaking of uh, damn shames, child, y'all be friendless. Um, I got plenty of friends. <laughs> right. I got my bitches by my side. Okay, okay. Right, right, right beside me. You got people on my side, but um, some well, people. My right. Hey, some people don't have nobody by their side. That's true. Okay? Mm, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And sometimes they question what normal folk would think is normal, but they have questions about it. And there was. An older woman on TikTok, she made a video saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm like an older woman and, you know, I like I just like to, you know, kind of share my experiences of like, you know, dating and friendship and blah, 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 all that stuff throughout my 20s and, you know, just share it with the younger people so oh. that they can know and learn from me. But there's like this one concept that I don't understand and I guess it's new or something. I don't know. <laughs> um. Hmm. What is the point of a girl's trip? What is the point of the girl's trip? Like, I just don't she didn't watch get the movie? it. I just don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, a girl's trip for what? Like, you're not my man. And I thought that, you know, if you're taking trips and you going, you know, abroad, you're supposed to go with your man. Because, what? you know. You you know that's that's your time your opportunity to you know do some freaky things in a new place and she said you're not my nigga you're my friend <laughs> okay, that's what she said did. she did <laughs> and did and I just wanna I just mind you in the video started off she says that she does not have friends boom <laughs> but wants to know but she wanna get in some friend business precisely. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> my thing is, how would you even understand the concept of a girl's trip with no friends? So mm-hmm. I, it makes sense why you don't know because right. you don't have friends. You ain't got it. Yeah. So you have never experienced it. So yes, you do not know why people go on girls trips because you have no girls. No girls. To go on a trip with. No girls. No girls. No girls. Uh, <laughs> why? No girls. <laughs> What are you working with? Mm, wow, no, no girls. girls. Uh, yikes. <laughs> Damn. Just terrible. Get up on your good foot. Just terrible. Uh, listen. Wow. When you take a trip, okay, it doesn't have to be for romantic or sexual purposes. Right. You can take a trip for pure fun. Fun. Joy. Enjoyment with your homies, with your yes. homies, with your peeps. Good time. We're going on a trip soon. A time to make memories with your with your people. Yeah, and just have a time. Have a time. <laughs> I feel bad for her. Not really. <laughs> right. Not really. She's just, it's just something that you say because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> damn you! You can't make friends. That's that's rough. <laughs> rough. Yeah. That's rough. Is that I that mean, you can't make friends, or that when people present themselves in friendships? Because I could just imagine her being the kind of person to, when someone says something like, "Hey, like we should grab coffee, we should grab food," she'd be like, "You know, my man." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Hold on. You want to? You want to? You want to get some macchiato with me? Because. <laughs> I can see why she don't have no friends if this is your mindset. If like if man man is on the mind, yeah. mm-hmm. man is okay. on the male centered, then I see why you don't have no damn friends. I'm don't nobody want to hang out with somebody who every damn second they're wondering and talking about their man. I wish yeah. my man was here. Do we know if she has a man? Girl from the co- she didn't say she had a man. Exactly. No man, no friend. She might not have no man, no friend. <laughs> no man, no friend on your arm. <laughs> Plenty on mine. <laughs> so, get some friends. You probably need that. Friend you on my friend. arm, no friend on your arm. Yikes. You need friends. Mm. Child. You need friends. Go outside, girl. Because sometimes when you don't got friends, uh. sometimes you will you will just do the foolishest the most foolish thing you will yeah like host a willy wonka <laughs> immersive oh. experience out in glasgow <sighs> if y'all don't know y'all it's, it's, been, a, no. it's been a <laughs> it's, it's been a roller coaster <laughs> oh my <Okay>. goodness <laughs> child out in glasgow okay out, out in glasgow amazing the people said let's help let's have a fun event for the kids a nice fun event for the children <laughs> you know what just came out willy wonka you know the new willy wonka with timothy chamalama lama came out <laughs> no 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 what you will not do get out <laughs> Isn't it Timothy Chalamet? Chalamet. Chalamet. Okay. Chalamet. See, look at that. <laughs> look at you, you trying to that? correct her. You, you see still that? ain't get it. <laughs> I was closer to Chalamet. I'm alive. You were. <laughs> Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> you know, that came out and yay, fun. The kids will love it. So they create a website for the... um. <laughs> they create a website for the Willy Wonka experience and they say, you know, it's going to be an immersive thing. We're going to have Willy Wonka and Oompa Loompas yeah. and, you know, the chocolate factory and photo ops and gifts and just, you know, it's going to be really fun. Bring the kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. The parents are like, love this. This sounds great. I'm going to take my babies. Yeah. Everybody buys a ticket. The tickets were about. $45, Ooh. like American dollars, right? Pretty oh, penny. Pretty, penny. Um, pretty penny. So per ticket, that's per ticket. Okay. Oh. Um, and everybody shows up and they are ready for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Experience. Yeah. It's okay. Let's see him. Now, mind you, on the website, there are no like actual images. There are just AI generated images, but... You know, who doesn't do that? It's just a little flyer. It's just a little yeah. something to be a background where you put the, yeah. you know, information for Colorful. your event. Uh, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? 
<laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Pish posh. Pish posh. <laughs> Buy the ticket. Everyone buys the tickets. They show up at the at the uh, warehouse or the location that the. Uh, <laughs> The warehouse. The yeah. warehouse. It's the warehouse. Yeah, it's the warehouse show. They showed up at this location and they said, Willie, Willie, we go outside. <laughs> Come in. We're waiting for you. Come on, bring those walkables. Knock, knock. Where are you? We're, We're the outside. Talking river. <laughs> We're outside. We're waiting. And finally, yeah. Finally, they let the people inside and it is a half, mm. half dressed. <laughs> Big ass Y'all, warehouse. Me, I wish. I might have to. Uh, I might put some some of the some videos. videos over need to there. understand Video. the side by side of what they thought and mm-hmm. what they got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> wow. So yeah, if you are listening, you might want to hop on over to the YouTube and watch so you can see the the videos I'm going to pop on in here. But um, yes. Wow, so many things happen. I mean, the people come in. And there are like tiny little backdrops that are hung up on the walls with just like tape. It looked like um, there's like little cardboard rainbows, and it's just not filled a meth up. Lab? There's nothing going a meth on. Lab. <laughs> no, it was, looks like a meth lab. <laughs> there, there was supposed to be like you're supposed to like walk through the whole thing. Oh my god, the factory, the chocolate. <laughs> There, they accurate. said they said that it took them three minutes to walk through the oh, whole thing. Oh, I forty five dollars wow. for three minutes. I'm suing what? someone. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, you're gonna give me my money back. You okay. gotta give me my money back, and then some, and then some. Cause it's trauma. Then they trucking through, they rolling through, and they're like, "There's the chocolate factory, and we supposed to get some confection." Yeah, yeah, chocolate. yeah. And so the people were like, "Y'all hide right over here at the Oompa Loompa." station that looks like a meth lab terrifying brother. um scary terrifying they were like here you go here's some refreshment they gave them half cups of lemonade and like two jelly beans each two jelly mm. beans and they didn't even have any <laughs> damn chocolate <laughs> bamboozled they ain't even had no chocolate how are we at the Willy Wonka experience and we don't get no chocolate there's something fishy about that is it not Willy Wonka and no the chocolate. chocolate factory not only that they didn't have no chocolate, but they happened to add a character to the story. <laughs> <laughs> they did, all right. Okay. The most famous one. The, the most, most famous, famous one. one. So apparently, you know, um. <laughs> we're, I'm promise y'all we're trying to keep it together, but I'm that trying. shit is crazy. It's so funny. So apparently, you know, when they were you know creating the event and everything like that they needed of course actors to come play the oompa loompas and you know willy wonka and stuff like that and to work the event so i believe they put like you know like a little blast out there on like little different sites like craigslist or you know whatever kind of thing people responded people got hired and the people that got hired to play the actors they were given a script now apparently if you remember what I said about the website, how it was just all AI generated images and things like that. Well, the script was 15 pages of AI generated words. Okay. Script. Wow. And um, it didn't make any sense. It was like gibberish. And I don't know if, if the AI added in this new character or if it was the person who created the event, but baby, <laughs> it was the star. There's a scene there's a scene <laughs> there's a scene there's a scene <laughs> there's a scene okay <laughs> where the children are crowded around willy wonka and willy wonka is like standing next to a mirror and he says oh my god who is that it's the unknown <laughs> and someone with a silver mask <laughs> oh, a silver mask blow dried hair and a black cloak starts <laughs> Creeping. <laughs> Creeping from behind the window. Slithering. <laughs> Slithering. Tick tocking. I mean, pop locking. Yes, literally. literally. Pop, around pop the mirror. Behind the mirror. <laughs> pop lock. With a reflective silver mask. Yeah. Looking like a Jabberwocky. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you can dance? Just give me some. You think you can dance? Y'all. And the children. They said, <laughs> <laughs> the kids 
kids were terrified. I was terrified. So I know the kids were terrified. Kids started crying. And backing up. Oh. Because what? Oh my Did gosh. you bring me to, Mom? Oh, God. These children and these parents thought they were just going to have a nice little day at mm-hmm. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. They and they walked I'm- into Willy's meth lab with the unknown popping up from behind mirrors they did yeah scaring the kids scaring the kids they didn't have no refreshments they didn't have no chocolate they had nothing for them to do they only had like one or two little tiny banners to even take a picture in front of and mm, it got rowdy Okay. It's terrible. It got rowdy because them parents were like, I know you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who put this on? Bring him to me now. Mm-hmm. People was getting rowdy. And they was getting rowdy with the actors because, I mean, you you are who's standing in front of me. I need you to call your boss or whoever. And they need to come down, come down here. Now. Yeah. And it got so rowdy that the police got called. The police came out and the police shut it down. down. Yeah. Because <laughs> what? To wow. be a figure known as the un <laughs> known as the unknown, <laughs> the unknown, and to have so much traction mm-hmm. on social media to where you are now the star, the yeah, star. of the Willy Wonka, and you were never supposed to be there in the first place. <laughs> I mean, not a character at all. No, it was not. Uh, it was not like a scary oompa. Well, there were there were there were those, <laughs> right? but. <laughs> point is for there to be a Willy Wonka experience and then whenever <laughs> they say what stands out most you say the unknown mm-hmm. and then people question you like what the fuck is that <laughs> no literally because it never was a thing <laughs> but once you see it you realize you never forget it you don't mm-hmm. forget that you don't forget something like and that and the kids won't eat her you don't because damn <laughs> um and if y'all want to go see a few of the actors have done interviews and things like that you can go watch them Go watch the unknown. Go you know? watch the unknown. The unknown. She unmasked herself. Yes, <laughs> and just let us know how crazy that the day was. I also came across a little article today that said it's a conspiracy, but the people said that the guy who put on the show, mm-hmm. they were speculating that he basically scammed all these people for their money. Oh yeah, because, oh, absolutely for sure because he needed to pay for his wedding. He says that's not true. That's also, not, you that's still not. scam them. I'm you sure. still scam people out their money. So what you gonna do about it? They also made a, uh, a post saying, you know, we are so sorry about, you know, the Willy Wonka event. We are going to um, uh, give everyone a refund. And then they deleted the post. Oh. And everybody said they have not gotten a refund yet. So <gasps> I'm surprised he hasn't. Got, I, is, is he in the process of getting sued? Because I feel uh, I like you need, so. I feel like you need licensing in order to be able to use any kind of like or throw any kind of. You know, it's not like a kids party where I'm like, I'm having a Willy Wonka themed kids party come through. This is something that someone's profiting off of, so they're mm-hmm. profiting off of the image and likeness. likeness of the Wonka movie. Yeah, the studio can sue you and be like, you're. We literally did not give you any permission to use any of this, like <laughs> at all. Not, not that you did well, but right? also. <laughs> You could have came to us and we could have tried to make some real shit happen. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's crazy. Ugh. Hopefully they reach out to the Wonka people, like the actual Wonka people. Reach out to the parents and like, can we put do send you a basket of chocolate or something? I have no interest. Keep your shit. <laughs> they didn't even get my any child, chocolate. My child is too traumatized. I don't think I want anything Wonka in my house no. again. It is what it is. A bad taste in my mouth. I don't even want nobody. I don't want nothing. I want shit. No, thank you. Got him. Pay for the therapy. Mm-mm. <laughs> Pay for the therapy. Because uh-huh. <laughs> we all need it. No, literally. Mm. That's all I got for the birds. <laughs> Damn. It was a wild week. Wow. I'm just very grateful that nothing more crazy happened than Willy Wonka. Because I really wanted to talk about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I got. Are we ready to get into our Pay It Dust and our Shining Moment? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So our Pay It Dust is when we talk about something that had us messed up, fucked up, upset from the week, and we want to dust it off of our shoulders. And then our shining moment is something that brought us joy, happiness, that we want to shine a light on. Yeah. Okay. Anyone got a Pay It Dust shining moment? I'll go first. I'm paying dust the last week. Mm-hmm. Everything about last week was not good for me. I had a really bad week. So I'm not getting into specifics. 
Uh-huh. But it was a bad week. Y'all know what happened. Yes. Yes. Let's move on from it. We're your friends. Shake yes. it out. Um, worst week ever of 2024. It was just terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying to get back up from it. But shiny moment. It was hard to find a light because there was no light. Uh, literally no light. Aww. But my light was my cousin Jasmine had a baby shower. So going to the baby shower and seeing my family and I mean, it just was, it was what I needed to bring some joy into my life. So yes. Beautiful. That is my shiny moment. My pay of dust is all of last week. All that. Everything in it. Dust it off. Yeah, I'm dusting it off, babes. (laughs) My pay of dust is going to be people that get a new number and text you knowing they got a new number and thinking for some reason that that new number that you never had in your phone is somehow stored in your phone. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm going to pay us to. And my shining moment is going to be last Monday because we went to the juice, juice drawing. Oh, that was a light in my week too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll say that as well. Yeah, that. And then Saturday... When me and well, first Saturday morning, me and Wes went to go visit grandma, oh, and yes. that was amazing. And then we went to the baby shower, which is great. And seeing all the little kids there, it made me want to have a baby. It was so cute, Aww. It did. and Jasmine looks so good. Yeah. Aww, and the family is so adorable, and uh, I'm just so happy for them. I am too. And he's gonna be the best big brother to ever. The new ever, ever. I know it. Aw, cute. <laughs> yes. Um, my pay it dust is going to be um that Outback Steakhouse commercial. I don't know if it's come across y'all's what uh-huh. y'all's ears yet. Okay, but the other day I was coming home from the gym. I was, you know, I was feeling good. I was listening to some podcasts, and then it hit, you know, like the ad break in the podcast, mm-hmm. right? When I say scared, oh, I mean, <laughs> what in the Wonka experience did Outback do to you? I was not expecting scared her to say the scared. the hell out of me. Uh. All of a sudden, they all just start hearing, oi, 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 oi. I'm like, oh my God. Chanting? It scared the, yeah, it scared, oh. the, scared the hell out of me. It was loud. Oh, okay. Like, I, I jumped. I was startled. I was like, I said, oh my God, what is that? What is that? And they were like, come to the Outback State House this weekend. With you. I said, what? Cut. <laughs> what? Cut. We're done. Cut it. We're done. Off. We're done. What? What? Come what? to the Outback State House. <laughs> Strip on the bar. Strip on the Bobby. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. I was so scared because it did it like. Three or four times throughout the commercial. Okay. And I'm telling you, That's... you're not prepared for any time that it does it. It um... just, oh, it scared the hell out of me. So fuck that commercial and fuck you <laughs> out back for creating it. I can't believe you. Fucking out back. <laughs> um, my shining moment is going to be that. Ooh, I just ate so good yesterday. Oh, ooh, yeah. You I did. ate to my heart's content. Oh, it was so good. I went to um, my fave Mexican restaurant, Acapulco, and I had a great That's time. so had interesting. That is your time. favorite Mexican <laughs> restaurant. We must yeah. free Frenchie from the shackles of Acapulco, yo. When's the last time you've been in Acapulco? I don't go to Acapulco. <laughs> Let's start there. So then you don't know. No, 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 no. I do know, which is why I don't go. Mm-mm. <laughs> no. No. You couldn't convince me to walk my ass in Acapulco, sit down, and order something. Okay, yeah, exactly. You don't know. If you decide you want to go to Acapulco for a birthday celebration or whatever. Oh, you ain't going to be there? I'll be there. <laughs> but it'll be for you and not the Acapulco. I'll eat before I come. Boop. That's what you do. That's, That's what, what you I'm do. saying. When's the last time you've eaten at Acapulco? Oh, Frenchie. Have you eaten since you've been an adult? Absolutely not. <laughs> Have because you eaten I knew when you from were a, a teen? From whenever I was a child, see, I so, knew. You see, you're going back I, to 19. 19? <laughs> what the fuck? That's crazy. No, 95, I'm not. 95, 96, Early 96, 2000s. 90. Early 2000s, baby. 
It's 2024. Maybe even fresh, maybe even middle school. It's 2024. I middle school was not, 2006. I will not. Listen to me. You have not. That's what I, I'm not. I'm not going to allow you to tell me these things because you have not. <laughs> since you haven't eaten there in the, um, in, in what, 20 years? Um, <laughs> since I was eight. <laughs> yeah, 20 years. Uh, I'm not taking your advice. Okay. I'm not taking your words. Okay. You don't have to. <laughs> Keep them. It's like, I. Now, but you're, I was just trying to move it. Yeah. You sure? You don't want to shine some more light on Acapulco? No, it was great. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm happy that you got your Acapulco. Mm-hmm. I got my shrimp queso in the fridge right now. Oh. It's going to be so good. Shrimp queso. No. One. Yeah. Yeah. It's queso? No. Sh- yum. No. No, it no, sounds no, you don't great. have to describe it. Shrimp on top of no, it? It's no, it's no, it sounds good. Hey, sounds hey, good. Hey, Frenchie, sounds yummy. Good. I cannot wait for you to tear that up. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. I am. Um, <laughs> let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Hey, everybody, we wanted to take a quick break right here just to tell you to stay connected with us. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and everywhere else at TVU Podcast. You can send us an email, a black umbrella PC at gmail.com. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple or wherever else, make sure that you follow us and leave us a review. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe, give us a like, and leave a comment. And also, don't forget, we have the TBU Season 6 playlist available on Spotify and Apple. Let's get to the gust of wind. (laughs) We ready? Yes. (laughs) Came right in there. (laughs) The wind said we need to get that Acapulco stench. Woo! Get it out. Blow it out. Get it out. Um, First of all, Nika... I need you to back me up because you said Acapulco was good when I was telling you about I, I said, said I haven't, I said I haven't been in years ladies, but I remember it being ladies <laughs> we have moved on no we're going back no <laughs> we have no, moved okay. on yes let's go let's go, let's go. hello <laughs> <laughs> my name is Wes once again and we are in the Gust of Wind segment the Gust of Wind segment is my segment it's where we talk about new music and pop culture and today we'll be talking about new music strictly now there's a lot mm-hmm. so keep up babes okay mm-hmm. I'm gonna start with Casey Musgraves Casey <sighs> too good to be true that's right my mm. fellow sister cause that's what I call Casey Musgraves <laughs> Casey Musgraves is my fellow sister is, he? is she not is she? She is. Country sis. Country sis. Country sis. Casey Musgraves is my fellow sister, okay? Mm-hmm. Came up with a new single called Too Good To Be True, okay? Now, Miss Musgraves, a record that illustrates the tug of war with self on vulnerability for fear of hurt from someone who is so good to you mm. that it's sometimes just too good to be true. Damn. No. Mm. That's what it was. Mm. And Casey came in. And from the first line, she's letting you know, it is so hard to be vulnerable. I mean, it's it's almost like she's illustrating a dream, right? Like, this is her Mm. dream. This relationship is her dream. What the experiences that she's having in this relationship is her dream. And it's almost like this person has gotten her to a point where she officially feels comfortable being vulnerable. But it just feels like Too 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 good to be true. So please don't let her down. Um, mm. don't hurt her. And man, mm. man, man, girl. I mean, yeah, Casey, Casey, it's some good stuff. You, she did her thing. She did. She did her thing. This album's about to be. <laughs> this album's gonna take us places that we just simply have not been before. Well, if you know, deeper, 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 well, <laughs> deeper, well. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Um, let's get to the next song. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Go ahead, sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, uh huh. Chloe girl. Chloe girl. Chloe Bailey. Chloe the queen. Chloe uh-huh. came out with F Y S. Now in the beginning, she asked us what we what th- we thought F Y S stood for. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fuck your shit. Okay. You thought it was. I thought it was, I 
thought it was like fucking you slowly or oh, yeah you did say that <laughs> damn fuck you. Fuck something. you were along the great lines of what the song is about you, so low yeah, key you are yeah. you were close did you have a guess nika i think mine was also fuck your shit actually mm-hmm. yeah so we all had an idea we were all wrong oh i thought it was fuck you saying i remember oh, oh, that was my first i thought it was saying. fuck you saying okay 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 fuck you saying well mm-hmm. y'all it stands for fuck your status <laughs> Your status, it don't matter. My Nick Nelson, the diamonds, I've been in it. And it, but your status, I just, just want to love you. Oh, yeah. first of all, Chloe came up on a track and she said, Love me, love me, love me, love me, love me. Uh, me. This shit said, mm-hmm. feel so good like that. Uh, oh, you hit it like that. Mm-hmm. Honey, up the back. Hey. You know when you love with the cat. I was uh, like, whoa. Uh, you know you in love with the cat. Uh, <laughs> oh. Chloe is talking her shit on this record. Fuck your status. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make, basically, just saying, you know, it's not about the things that you have. I don't care if you may not have. The money to shower me with diamonds and cars and and and, and all these experiences, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I don't care because I'm gonna give it to you like you the most <laughs> <laughs> you most important in this world. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give it to you no matter what your status is. Mm-hmm. She said you can put that up when you get up in the room with me. Okay. Yeah. Put it out. Put it on the shelf. Don't matter what it is. Okay. Because mm-hmm. whenever you're in this bedroom, fuck it. Breaking it down. Yeah. Because I'm going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. No matter what the status is, baby. Fuck you, stud. Upon first listen, thoughts. Yeah. Frenchie? I thought, love me, run the back. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. Run the back. No, but it was, it was great. Um, I know when we heard the snippet, it was kind of like, what is this going to sound like? I don't know. But Chloe always has a way of giving us like the meat of the song yeah. that makes you feel like, Huh? What is it? Right. Like, mm-hmm. What's Whoa, happening? That, cause, cause if you know Chloe in that production, she don't play. Mm. Yeah. She produces down. Yeah. So you're always like, "There's a lot going on here. I don't know where it starts." But uh, yeah. how she how she has a, she has an art of easing you into production that I think is just something that a lot of people don't have nowadays. Chloe has an art of easing the listener into what you're about to experience and hear, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. immediately it makes you feel sexy on your not sexiest day no matter yes, what yes it does it does mm. and it just made ooh. upon first listen nika i too was mm. like this comparing to the snippet that i heard mm-hmm. i said this bitch is crazy oh she's insane <laughs> she's crazy she's out of this world yeah. she's out of this world talented oh my yeah fuck your status babe. fuck your status babe doesn't matter makes you want to slow dance in the room you and the dog just uh, shimmy mm. shimmy shake yeah. body roll body roll oh you knew <laughs> that, yeah. and I heard that too, you said it babe <laughs> body roll feels so good like that love when you hit on the yeah you know you love, love with the cat, cat. Ah. yeah Oh, I think every time I've listened to this song this week, I've let it play over and over probably about at least five times each time I'm listening to it five times in a row. I'm running it back. Run it. And the visual. And it was just the visualizer. Just the visualizer. Yes. Just and she looks good. good. Looks good. Hair good. Body team. Yeah. I mean, she's spin the record again. Again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for those who have not spun it, spin it, spin buy it. it, do what you need to do. Yeah. But you need to get that Chloe fuck your status. F Y S. Yeah. Because I don't think it's gonna come up if, if you type in fuck your status. You're gonna have to no, type no, in F F Y Y S. Chloe, type it in. Get your life and fuck your status. Even in life, if you feel like I just don't feel like fuck your status, know that you still got that. No matter what. Yeah. Um. Next, Jacob Collier. <laughs> wow. Wow. Came out <laughs> with Jesse Volume Four. Okay. Whenever I tell y'all 
So it's just Jesse? It's just Jesse. Trust me, I did my research, so I knew how okay. to say I, I know how to say names this episode and I know how to say the projects. Okay? Come on now. <laughs> so it's Jesse Volume Four. All right. Um and we talked about Jacob Collier last time because we went over at Bridge Over Trouble Water with Tori Kelly Ooh. and John Legend, yeah. which we already told y'all. Mm. Amazing, right? Mm. Now my little bit on this project, right? I said, first of all, he's a musical genius. Um, yes. I don't know why, but he makes me for some reason think of y'all gonna laugh, but it's okay. He makes me think of the little boy from August Rush. Have y'all seen oh, August Rush? Oh, yeah. So uh, when he was... <laughs> right. Yeah. So to me, I see Jacob in him, but like an evolved, grown-up version of, of August, August Rush. Rush. That's funny. Yeah, I can see that. You see it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, it, it's just something... Um, well, I was watching an interview that he did, and he said, there's something about giving power to other people who... have to other people's voices over your own mm-hmm. and that to me that's amazing. was very powerful because he was speaking about how his first project was all him mm-hmm. so then whenever he started doing these volumes of jesse because there's jesse volume one two three and four mm-hmm. it was all about collaboration and bringing it, roping in artists that inspired him and like that just gave him some kind of footing or grounding in this industry mm-hmm. and it came to a point where he was like, the collaborations just started to make sense and kind of just come together by themselves in a sense. Um, Very naturally, very organically. And this project is just that. You can Um, hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like, or how I describe it, it's it's a project that makes you feel like you've taken a sonic, sonically, you've taken a trip around the world. Um, You've experienced different cultures, you've experienced different sounds, um, different mediums whenever it comes to music. He's not a he's not shying away from anything, but the mm-hmm. man knows how to just bring it together cohesively into something that is a flawless body of work. I'm not sure if he's scored a movie yet. Hmm. I don't know but either. I haven't heard. That. I'd love it if he did. I'd sit down and just watch. The, I don't care what movie it is, honey. No, mm-hmm. it could be Madam Web. I'm gonna sit down and watch the whole thing because he scored it, and I'm gonna listen to all that good music. The movie might be trash. Yeah. But the music gonna be good. That's all I know. <laughs> um yeah. And it's just it's just it's it's important. I loved it. I loved this project. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse Volume Four. Jesse. Check it out, okay? Check it out. Now y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a fave of the show has released something. Schoolboy Q. Yeah. Went ahead and came out with blue lips. Yeah. Not red lips. <laughs> Tokyo Tony. Okay. I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're listening. I don't know if you're listening, but it's not red lips. Blue <laughs> lips, right? My, my, my. Uh, mm. Just, you know, Schoolboy Q comes out, what, every like four, five, six years? Like, yeah. It's, it's, something that, it's something that just yeah. makes you wait a while. But once you get it, you're going to eat and you're going to eat every single time um the production is flawless uh lyricism cannot be matched it was perfect it was balance of conscious rap and low-key ratchetivityness you know yes. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to balance that very well um i want to hear y'all's favorite songs from the project um my favorites on the project were I, first of all it was hard to pick because i mm-hmm. loved it from top to bottom um but my favorites are lovebirds movie Ohio first and back in love. Okay. Okay. Nico, what are your favorites? Um, thank God for me. Mm. Movie. Mm-hmm. Back in love and time killers. Okay. But we have, we're sharing some of the same ones. My favorites were thank God for me, movie, Ohio and first. So mm. all in all, amazing album. I loved it. It's great. It's one of the best albums that we had this week to listen to. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I, this is Schoolboy Q's best album. Oh, okay. Boom. Come on, Frenchie. Put your stamp on it. Yeah. Stamp. <laughs> stamp. Stamp and proved by Frenchie. Boom. Know that. Bam. Mm-hmm. Um, next, we have Eric Bellinger, The Rebirth, The Party, in The Bedroom. So, I want Frenchie to start us off with this one since this was a project that you really, really, really enjoyed. Oh, my God. Talk about it. <laughs> I loved this project. First of all, I haven't listened to a full eric bellinger project probably since i was in high school and you have when because we reviewed multiple he's come out with a couple things since the podcast has come out and we've reviewed multiple things of his was it in the beginning Uh uh-huh you don't remember it it. hmm? 
I might not have listened to it. Really? Because I remember in the beginning of this podcast, I would always forget to listen to the music. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I think I think I probably did it. But um, yeah. Uh, wow, this was very very good. You know, I almost forgot how talented Eric Bellinger is and his writing and the production and just the way he structures the songs. Like I almost fucking forgot this right here. Put me in line. Okay. Put me in check. It said, don't forget about me. Don't forget. I really does this. I really do this. Okay. I'm really bringing the sexy, slow, sensual R and B. Like this is R and B. And, um, my favorites on here. For shit. <laughs> I mean, I love them all. First of all, it was disc one, disc two. There yes. were two discs. Yes. Okay. The party in the bedroom. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but I loved all of that. Don't play with it. Um, ooh, perfect picture. Mutual agreement. Mm. And nasty. Okay. Yeah. Right. Nika? Fuck yeah. Oh. <laughs> All of that, don't play with it. Uh, run that back with K Camp because I love K Camp. I love K Camp. I love K Camp. Um, Sage with Nia was good. Fiendin, uh top tier with Tom Stith was good. Uh, okay, but mm-hmm. um, I love Run That Back. That was it. Uh, for me, uh, I you know it's Eric. I feel like. I think it, I have an interesting relationship with Eric Brownlidge's music because I feel like, I don't know if maybe I've outgrown it sonically, but I know for sure it has not really evolved or mm-hmm. changed from whenever I was listening to it back in high school. Mm-hmm. So I know that Eric knows his audience. So this is going to cater toward everybody who loves Eric Brownlidge. Mm-hmm. I used to be an Eric Brownlidge stan in the beginning. Yeah. Um, maybe not so much anymore, but I don't know why I was expecting something different but I, I did go in with an expectation oh uh and i went in with an expectation of there to be a bit of just change in it and i didn't see it i didn't hear it at least for me but mm-hmm. it's a solid project eric doesn't come out with bad shit mm-hmm. it's Good. just maybe i wanted i think i just had an expectation of a little bit more it's not a bad thing but i just had an expectation of more whenever I, and i'm not gonna i'm not saying more when it comes to the song because it was track list two discs right Mm -hmm. there was plenty to listen to but although there was a lot to listen to i think that a lot of it kind of sounded the same Mm -hmm. so um there were some standout tracks like i said Mm -hmm. but it wasn't my favorite from this week however don't play with it yeah it was uh, however it wasn't that bad so wasn't that so there we go eric so if you haven't listened go listen to the rebirth three the mm-hmm. part, the party in the bedroom. The rebirth, the rebirth. He loves it. He loves that. Yeah, he loves that. Honey. <laughs> every every word, every every rebirth album has the rebirth. Because it's the rebirth. Yeah, okay. It's the rebirth. How many times we gonna be born? <laughs> <laughs> again and again. Again and again, again and again. <laughs> um, but I always praise Eric Bemlinger on making very smart decisions whenever it comes to collaborations because he does yes. not yes. miss. I may not. I'd be a fan of the solo tracks mm-hmm. but a collaboration he gonna always hit it out the park every time <laughs> so i'm here for that eric yeah. um next let's get into kenyon dixon the yeah. r&b you love soul of the 70s now kenyon um in a world where a lot of mainstream r&b music is taking a similar Sound in regards to production, Kenyon definitely um, reels us back into the roots of R&B, specifically whenever it comes to the 70s sound of R&B. If you're thinking Silk Sonic, think of that, but Kenyon Dixon. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the project. Um, six songs, right? I yes. believe six songs. Yeah, very sure. quick, simple, easy. Um, it's called The R&B You Love, Soul of the 70s. Um, it's a perfect project to place on your record player and vibe out to with your gin and your little crystal glass yes. in your orange fuzzy chair. Oh, yeah. That In the crystal glass, it got to be green. You know, back in the day, they had that green <laughs> yes. crystal with a little, that's what it just it gave me that kind of, I got my gin and tonic. 
mm-hmm. and I'm vibing. I got my little fur on, my brown yeah, glasses, my bell bottom. You know, and mm-hmm. I'm just vibing out to it. So I really enjoyed um, the project. Any thoughts from either of y'all? Um. <laughs> The way you felt about Eric Bellinger was the way I felt about this yeah. album. Okay, okay, <laughs> interesting. I thought it was kind of like, eh, kind of like all sound the same to me. I didn't have a standout. I mean, uh, besides Lucky, I guess if I had to pick one, I would pick Lucky. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't my favorite. It okay. was just okay to me. Any thoughts for you? I enjoyed Can I Have This Groove? That's my Can favorite. Can I Have This Groove? <laughs> That's my favorite Can track. I Have This Groove? Get the same energy... Um, what what is it? Um, two step in the living room. Yeah, uh, they are. Yeah, that's like a, it's like a married they're married with Alex Isley. Yes, it's like boom, like putting that on and that on, that's stacking that up. That's just my baby daddy. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, a beautiful family, a very talented family, and a very talented daughter. My gosh, my mm-hmm. Alex God. Isley and Kenyon Dixon have a talented daughter whose name is Isley. Um, shout out to Isley. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, but woo. I mean, you, yeah, that that for them to both make a child and then for her to come out very talented, you just know she's gonna be a problem <laughs> in this industry. So y'all better watch out and watch out now. <laughs> and whatever in whatever she chooses to do, that's gonna be a problem right there because she 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 ain't no joke. Mm-hmm. Um, next, Jade Nova. Oh, Jade Nova. Jade, Nova. Jade, first of all, Jade Nova is a fave on this show. Anything that Jade comes out with, we love, we love and we <laughs> review. Jade came out with Where Have I Been? I'm going to read a little bit about what I wrote about it. Because yes. I really, really did enjoy this project. I just said, my, my, my. Um, it's an amazing body of work um, from beginning to end. Jade allowed us as listeners to develop our own visual in our head and made it easy for us to do so by how detailed she was in her dialogue. Um, she weaved all her music in seamlessly yes. and really led with the heart on this one. So this is not a project that is just, I made some songs, put them all on an album, listen to them. You really have to start from the top yes. to the bottom. And I mean, she put her heart into it mm-hmm. and was very vulnerable. She was honest. She yes. was also singing. Sing it. Shout out to um, Leslie Odom Jr. Shout out to Auntie Tab, who was yes. also up in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Tank, Tiana Tank Ball. She was also up in that thing as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, Jade told a story from beginning to end. And I think I like, I was in the beginning, I was like, I wish I had a visual. But I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. It was so detailed to where need one. she allows you to, number one, sit and listen and consume the music and then make your own visual in your yes. head because I was seeing it from the top. Yeah, from exactly. the re- From the restaurant where she met the man and yes. from there all the way down to the last therapy session where she was like, hey, listen, yeah. got rid of him, wasn't, but it just, it, it made so much sense and then her talking about the relationship between her and her dad and how he uh-huh. didn't really, yeah. you know, affirm her or tell her that he loved her or, you know, she knew that he did mm-hmm. but it was never, it was never concrete because he didn't say it and then her asking it was just yeah oh my gosh Jade yeah Jade. It was flawless Jade this is a flawless project it's beautiful it is so beautiful did y'all have any favorites that stood out for you from the album you know what not necessarily well I mean damn it's just really hard to pick of course I, I love pick. I love affirm me I've loved that one since she's dropped it mm-hmm. um but if I had to pick one that we haven't talked about before i would pick the title track where have i been Mm -hmm. i loved that one that one was was like the standout to me but Mm -hmm. they're all equally amazing in my eyes nigga do you stand out um i'm sorry excuse me um i also liked where have i been but i love the whole i love me i loved listening to the full project and it feeling like a play no yeah, for real it felt like a play and i was watching it in my head because i'm creating the visuals and i'm just like oh my goodness yeah. and then the and then a song comes and you're like oh mm-hmm. and then i got like, choked up and you know, like, like, i was like oh yeah. my god like oh my god jade mm-hmm. ah. mine is also where have i been <laughs> yeah because that was when i came on i said oh because yeah. where have I been? You knew what to title this. <laughs> right? out, of, out of all the titles, I mean, all of the things that are on this album, you could have named this album anything. Yeah, Where Have I Been was the... That's the one. Boom. Mm-hmm. 
was the boom. The that was definitely that was the arc. That was the arc in the yes. story. And just yeah. wondering where you've been because I lost myself for so long mm. in people or a person specifically just from this kind of thing. And yeah. I lost myself in my craft and people not supporting me or mm-hmm. being talked down on or not really understanding what it means to be affirmed mm-hmm. or not really knowing what path I want to go on. And then whenever I do pick one, I'm being ridiculed for doing it because right. it's not making money. And, you know, just all, a lot of the stresses that come with being an artist. Mm-hmm. She illustrated it beautifully, and she Very is gorgeous. And yes. that voice, my God, my God, my God, Jade, Jade, we Ooh. love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Yes. Uh, we love you. Uh, we'd love to have you on the show. Uh, no love. pressure. With love. No, no pressure. pressure. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> overall, we are always going to support you, no matter what. So yes, yes. Give me some applause for that one, Jade. <laughs> applause! 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 Um, yes, next. And we have a lot of music, y'all. So just yes. stick with me. <laughs> stick with me. We're hanging in there now. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm going to the visual aspect of some things, right? Cardi B. Like what? Freestyle. Thoughts. Yeah. Damn, girl. Shit. Oh, okay. That was my thoughts. <laughs> okay. I got to work. <laughs> I sat down. I said, oh, Cardi B dropped a new. Let me watch it. Mm-hmm. I had to turn my back yeah, <laughs> so that only I could see what was going on on my phone because that body oh, was yeah. out and the body was looking good as hell. Yeah. Was. Cardi looks amazing. The rap is hot too. I like the rap. A it cute, is. cute little freestyle. Like it. I think it was the perfect length too. It was. Yeah. Wasn't too long. Perfect style. And then for the visual to lead us into this ain't over yeah yeah and you kind of hearing a little bit of yeah like you hear like the beat in the background of the next song you're like mm-hmm. okay okay but then it ends and you're like oh wait hold on i want to yeah. i wanted a little bit more but she mm-hmm. left us with wanting a little bit more from that mm-hmm. she looked good she looks she so looked amazing good. and yeah. overall i'm excited for what cardi's gonna bring this year in this era so music is gonna be really it's, it's gonna be a good one it's the Dukes are out, babe, because yeah. everybody's coming out with really good music, and it's just the beginning of the year. And by the time we get to the end, I don't even know how we're gonna. What's gonna happen? I, I don't know. know what's gonna happen this year because I feel like everybody deserves a Grammy at this point. To start, <laughs> just you should start mailing them out now. Just, just right. Okay. Just start engraving them just right do now. Them now. Mm. Make sure my girl Jay gets one. Yeah, because she needs a Grammy. She needs a what is it? An Emmy? Uh-huh. Yes. Or, oh, no, a Tony. Tony. Grammy and a Tony. In a Emmy, oh, shit. Why not? Yeah, no, yeah. whatever. Why not? Give her, give her whatever. All. She needs them all. <laughs> give her, give her the things. <laughs> <Yes>. Right. <laughs> um, next, Miley Cyrus and Pharrell Williams collabed mm-hmm. on a uh, doctor work it out. And let me just tell you, let me work it out. <laughs> hey, work it out. Hey, yeah. I could be a doctor. Or I could be a nurse. Hey, hey. Uh, the medication. Just don't be wearing it. Hurts. Hey, and up the stoop. Hey, yeah, baby. My lead. Let me work it out. Oh, let me, let me, oh, oh let me, yeah. Let me, let me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Get on it. <laughs> I th- the thing is the visual was perfect. It was very simple. It was just Miley being free and yeah, working it out and having a time and having mm-hmm. a ball. Um, I feel like working it out. Oh, it just it sounded yeah. good. It made me feel good. Uh, in a week of lows, that was one of my highs as well. Listening to that song made me feel really good. So mm-hmm. I say, if y'all have not seen the video, watch it, watch, watch it. it, and also listen to the song as well. Mm-hmm. Um, boom, and then we have Ryan Destiny. Yeah. Ryan Destiny came out with How Your Hands Feel. I also wrote a little bit something about that too. So just give me a hey. second. Sorry, sorry. Hey, listen, I was doing a lot of things. No, this week, no, okay? get to it. Let's do it. Um, Ryan Destiny, How Your Hands Feel. Um, I'm abs- um, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm messing up. Oh. Ryan Destiny, How Your Hands Feel. Um, it's definitely a crossroads between like soft rock and R&B, which I kind of like for Ryan Destiny. I love this lane because it, it, it stands out for her mm-hmm. in a world sonically, especially in R&B where a lot of things are trying to sound the same you know everybody who's the same formula this kind of deviates a bit and it puts her in a position of i'm in the lane of my own let me tell y'all how i'm feeling and how your hands feel yes mm. um she is just simply one that stands out from the crowd like i said uh, the video is gorgeous she is such an effortless beauty with the voice to match um she's not trying too hard her vocal is guiding the track the track is not guiding her 
Um, it's just excellent, Ryan. Um, I can't wait to hear more from you. This is how you accomplish sexy and sultry without being overt. Yes. Um, I think it was a great track. And I'm excited to hear more from Ryan. Yeah, I'm excited because I, you know, especially when you see something, because Ryan is also, I mean, an amazing talent when it comes to an actress, mm-hmm. also dancer. Yep. But she dances a lot too, so mm-hmm. I was expecting a track like "How Your Hands Feel." She about to be out here like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like the, the unknown, yeah, so when, <laughs> like the unknown from the Walker Experience. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, Ryan. I, so I didn't know what to expect from the tracks so when I turned uh-huh. on the thing and I heard it and just saw it was like blue light and her and L. A. and just like. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit, this is like a soft rock R&B vibe. I'm kind of really into this. Mm -hmm. And I dig it for Ryan. And I'm excited for what's to come. How did y'all feel? It was a sexy track. It was a sexy track. Sultry. And a beautiful music video. Uh, Yeah. Listen to that. Listen, Ryan. (laughs) Listen, Ryan. We can't wait to hear more. So keep Mm -hmm. on feeding us. Don't yeah. just give us one and then be like, okay. No, right. Don't just give us one and then be like, okay, y'all are good for a bit. No, I no, want some more now. No, no, no. I know we're going to ease into it because it's just the beginning of the year, but please, I want it all. Um, also, Ryan doesn't collab with a lot of people often, which I think is smart because whenever I think of Ryan Destiny music, I really do think of Ryan Destiny and that is my focal point. It's very much like I see Ryan. She does yes. do like some collabs with just rappers and stuff every now and then, mm-hmm. but... I always see Ryan as the focal point for our music versus being like, oh, yeah, Ryan, she got that track. We got Yeah, no, like she really no. does make it that her music is hers. And I, and I value that and appreciate that. And I think that's really great for an artist to have. So, um, yes, that is my gust of wind segment, yes. everyone. Woo! A long one, but a good one. No, we're well fed. So, thank we y'all for bearing with me. And Frenchie, <laughs> take us away. All righty. Well, I have... The task of handling our under our umbrella this week. It's going to be a cute little short one. Possibly. We'll see. But um, anyway, let's put up our umbrella. <sighs> All right. Under our umbrella today, I was very inspired mm-hmm. by a few events this week. And I wanted to talk about the power of your voice. <sighs> um, <laughs> okay, Ursula. <laughs> your right. voice. Your exactly. voice. Your voice. Um, so my first question is, um, for all of us, like growing up, did you like, were you surrounded by maybe like your parents or, you know, other family members or even friends that kind of like encouraged you to speak your mind and speak freely and, you know, say what you got to say, like that kind of thing. Um, because I was just thinking of, of like where I believe that your voice being empowered starts from, and I would assume it starts in the home. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's my question. Do you think that, or did you feel or receive encouragement to use your voice and have power in your voice and be empowered, powered in your voice growing up? Mm. Nika, you go first. I don't, I feel like maybe it's a mix, like use your voice at certain times Mm. but in other spaces and with certain people especially anyone older than you anyone that's an elder like watch your tone with them like watch your voice with them and don't don't talk back or question anything that they do type shit Mm. but i don't know i don't think it was ever like you gotta speak up use your voice i don't think it was like necessarily pushed a lot Mm mm-hmm so yeah i was a pusher so (laughs) push people yeah i was a pusher (laughs) as a kid um i got in trouble for using my voice a lot so i don't think like i i guess i heard my parents use their voice but i was in trouble for talking for talking in class that was my big thing like whenever we go when we when we would go to parent teacher conferences um they'd be like he's very smart he talks a lot he's very Mm -hmm. smart he just talks a lot in class so i was Mm -hmm. a talker Mm -hmm. um and I also talked back. <laughs> Y'all, I don't know how my parents did it, but I was a talk backer as well. Uh, it didn't matter what it was. I was going to ask why. And if I got in trouble for asking why, I would still ask why. Mm. My, my The most I remember getting in trouble for whenever I was little was talking back. And it was never disrespectful. 
it was just more so asking questions as to why this is happening to me, whether it was like me getting in trouble or me not being able to go, me not being able to go somewhere or going outside or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always had something to say back to my parents. So I guess in that instance, when using my voice, I was always told, just do what I say. Yeah. yeah. Stop asking questions. Yeah. Cause they were getting hot. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, I don't, I'm not even going to say rightfully so. Cause I thought it was wrong, <laughs> but they'd be like, you know, like just do it. Like you're, or, or, yeah, or, or stop asking. So. Just, just, just dang. Yeah. So I would get in trouble for using my voice. So uh, what I remember the most about using my voice as a kid was I'm going to use it, but <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, I oh, I feel like I had like a mixture of both of y'all's. Like growing up, I would I would want to like question and ask why and things like that. But I feel like when I was younger, I did not do ooh, excuse me. When I was younger, I did not do it. Um I just always wanted to, but I knew that if I did, I would get in trouble because like, oh, I'm like, you know, it's like I'm talking back or I'm saying something that I shouldn't be saying or, you know, like just that feeling of like, oh, don't say nothing. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. you're going to get in trouble or, Mm -hmm. you know, someone's going to yell at you or, you know, whatever, because you're saying what you have to say. Um, But when I got a little bit older, Um, because me, I grew up with me and my mom and my sister and me and my sister are 11 and a half years apart. So I grew up with my oldest sister and, um, so I didn't really have like a peer around me. You know what I'm saying? So when I started to get a little bit older and I started to make friends at school, I think that was when I started to feel like, Hmm, yeah, let me, let me put some back into it. You know, like, (laughs) hold on. (laughs) Tell him froggy today. I might leap. Hold on. Because why? Yeah, why? (laughs) (laughs) And me and my mom, we would go back and forth because I would want to keep asking questions. Like, if I knew something was wrong, I'm like, no, it's wrong because. And then my mom's the person who was like, well, I'm always right. And I'm the person who was like, but this time you're wrong. (laughs) And then we're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And my sister had to come in the middle and be like, just stop. Like she would tell me like, just, just stop. Just give it up Mm -hmm. because she's not going to budge. She thinks she's right. Mm. You just have to let it go. And so then I feel like I kind of fell back into like a, okay, whatever. I'm I'm just not going to speak up because if I do, it's not going to be received well, or I'm just kind of going to get the, well, just let it go mm. for yeah. like, for the betterment of the situation or right. whatever. Stop digging it. Just, you yeah. know, like just don't, don't dig at it. Just, just let it be. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys think that you can recall a time where you wanted to speak up for yourself or that you did speak up for yourself to tell like your story, your truth or whatever? Even if it's kind of like in general, it doesn't have to be super specific. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, what's the, say the question one more time. Can you recall a time that you had to speak up for yourself or that you wanted to? Mm-hmm, tell I your story, tell your truth. I, and when, I, when was that time? I recall that I was in high school. I recall that. <laughs> <laughs> I was in high school. Uh-huh. And my, my, my. My, 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 my. Mm. Uh, it was tumultuous. I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. It was tumultuous and it wasn't cute, but I also didn't back down. So eh. it lasted for years. You I'll stand say your that. Ground. Mm-hmm. And one truth lasted for years of bitter back and forths and a lot of arguments and a lot of not speaking to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that time. Yeah. I whenever I learned how to use my voice, really learned how to use it, not just in a small way, but in a big way. Mm-hmm. Um, because I know I was, I was being treated unfairly and wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was not backing down, and I didn't. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I Hell recall yeah. that it wasn't easy, but I didn't. Yeah, I was gonna say too, and also, how did it feel in that moment when you were like, oh. Was it scary for you or did you feel like, you know, empowered to do it or were you kind of like nervous even though you were? In the beginning it was scary. Yeah. But I, once you start using it, you have to keep on using it because they're mm. not used to you using it. 
So in the beginning it was scary, and then it started to become empowering. But it was an evolution. Yeah. It was like, gosh, like I would sit on things and be like, I really want to say something. I really want to tell them something. But mm-hmm. then after a while, I said, you know what? It's going to come out. So just say it. Don't. <laughs> uh, and then it started to feel more empowering as I kind of got more of a sense of self in college. So, yeah. Mm, I like that. I can remember a time and I did say something just because I was getting irritated and I was getting, and I was just like, man, you know what? Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I said whatever I needed to say and just kind of like got shot down and like, well, nah, 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 like getting it turned back on me. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to like, and in that moment I was hurt because I was like, you asked me to, t- to speak and to say what's on my mind or whatever. And then when I do it, you're basically telling me to shut up, shooting me down and telling me I'm wrong and that I need to stop talking or you're talking over me. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. yeah. What, what do you really want me yeah, to do? Yeah, what do you want me to do? And why ask the question and try to and basically open the floor for me to speak if you didn't even really want to speak want me to speak in the first place? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I yeah. Mine is pretty similar. Um, I feel like probably my most it's pretty mild, but I do remember it specifically because it was the first time that I actually kind of like stood up to this family member. Mm-hmm. Um, they thought that I did something or broke something in their house or whatever. And I was like, no, I definitely did not. And they were like, yeah. yes, you did. You're a liar. <laughs> oh. And I was like, what? If you know me, number one enemy liars i hate (laughs) liars so when she called me a liar i was like excuse you Mm. no honey i am no liar like i definitely did not do anything up in there like i didn't break nothing i didn't do nothing like i would fess up i'm not a liar and she just did not believe me and it was so and she kind of like put me like on time out basically uh, like time out. time out you know like she like she made me go sit over somewhere and like it was weird i think i called my mom or she called my mom maybe i don't even remember but it was just weird and i was like i'm not taking that like i it was it frustrated me so much because I was like, okay, this is my moment to finally, like, you know, speak up and use my voice and just, like, not take what's being thrown at me, Mm -hmm. even though it's, like, an adult and it's a family member, like, and I had kind of grown up with the, oh, you know, like, that's your family member, that's your elder, you know, person, you don't really speak up, you don't talk back to them kind of a thing. Right. And this is my moment to do that because I just wasn't going to take it. And it was like, I'm still not being believed, like. I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I'm telling my truth. I'm telling my story and I'm still getting shut down. And I'm being told that I'm not telling the truth. It was so confusing and frustrating for me. Like I will never forget that. Mm. Um Yeah, that's how it felt. Confusing. Frustrating. Mm-hmm. I was upset because I felt that moment of like empowerment just for me to get that in response. I was not feeling that. Um, which my next question is, has there ever been a moment where you did tell your truth and you received backlash? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. Right. I'm sure we've all gone through that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have something to say and you say your thing. Not everybody is ready to accept it. Not everybody is willing to listen to it. And sometimes they might have some nasty stuff to, to uh, throw back your way. Yep. Um and how did how so how did this like affect you then moving forward? Like you told your truth, but you got this backlash. How did you move on? Oh, it wasn't hard mm-hmm. cuz it was my truth. So it wasn't like it was I was trying to figure things out. That's what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So whatever truth I had to tell, whether I got backlash from it or not, it's already out there. So there was no moving on from it. I think the biggest thing is building up to telling your truth. Yeah. That's like the hardest thing. But once you say it, 
Mm-hmm. After that is just boom. That's what it was. Like you know, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't very hard. Did it change on. the way you started telling? your story afterwards, like any other things that, you know, you had to, it just makes you more comfortable to say things and to speak up Mm -hmm. or at least me. I don't know. (laughs) Right. You said I got backlash and it made me say it even more. Yeah. (laughs) The thing is, it's, it's interesting. If you get backlash on things like, I don't know, like work ethic or like we have to like prove yourself in some kind of so in some kind of way, uh-huh. then I could see where after you have to like start to keep tabs on certain things that you do and say and whatnot. But mm-hmm. if it's just your truth on specific topics or things going on in your life or just life experience, the hardest thing is saying the experience. And once you've said it, it's like a <sighs> exhale. Mm-hmm. And then from there, there's not much to go back and forth about because I already told you what is, what's up. So you could go back and forth with yourself all you want to. But <laughs> yeah. For me, I want to say that there were a couple of times where I would be like, well, this is my truth. I'm telling you what it is. And they wouldn't believe me. And I'd be like, I mean, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what else you want me to say and how further I can explain myself and say, this is what it is. This is what happened. And, and if I made a mistake, then I'm going to be like, okay, like, um, I apologize for doing that. Shit. Cause fuck mm-hmm. that was fucked up of me and I shouldn't have done that. And I wasn't trying to make you feel that way. Like that wasn't what I was trying to do. But with sir, with things like that, I feel like it's easy to be like, well, bitch, <laughs> you yeah. know, like if you don't believe me, I can't, I can't force you. you. Yeah, I can't make you, and I can't force you to believe me. So with that, yeah, I can just like push aside and be like, well, that that was that. But with, I know with certain things where I told my truth and like people didn't believe me, I was like, well, shit, I ain't gonna say nothing to you ever again because mm. you already had it in your mind that you were not going to believe me. Yeah. So why are you even asking me questions if you already made up your mind? Yeah. Oh, like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. For me, when those things would happen, it affected me. Um, to where I just didn't want to say anything Mm. because I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like when I have something to say, and I get like what I perceive to be a negative reaction or like you know backlash i'm getting told like to shut it down yeah. or whatever it's like what the freak like i really yeah, that's what the freak <laughs> really dislike that right i really dislike that so it just made me um i mean i s- kind of still struggle with it but i've been doing so much better like yeah. i'll be saying hell it. yeah i'll be saying it but um but i do still struggle with that like the build up you know like yeah. mm, when do i say how do I say? Is it okay to say? Like, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's certain things that I still, I'm like, I don't want to touch. I don't want to talk about. But hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll get to a place where I'm like, okay, I'm more comfortable in my voice and I want to use it and this is what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Um, And I kind of wanted to tie that into like Risa Tisa okay. um, because I don't know if you well we talked a little bit about Risa Tisa a few weeks ago we yeah. on the pod you know what I'm saying but um, if you don't know Miss Risa Tisa has had quite the week okay she was yes. on Tamron Hall she was on Good um, uh, Good Morning America and she also was on uh, is it The Cut? Yeah. Yes. She, interview by The Cut. had an interview by The Cut in Hanifa. In Hanifa. Looking good. Okay. And I just thought that was really cool that she's getting all of this attention and all this love from these outlets and things like that because she shared her story, because she shared mm. her truth. Yep. Even though it wasn't something that was pretty, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't like it here's how I became president of the United States. And it was all r- rainbows and puppies all the way through. Cause I feel like those kinds of stories get amplified a lot when it's pretty, when it's nice, when it's something that is positive, you know, we hear those stories all the time, but when stories are like 
the truth then you know there's ugliness in it there's insecurity in it there's mess ups in it even through all the joy there's still problems people don't want to hear those stories people don't like to hear it or what they do is they poke holes all in the story because Mm. they don't like the way it sounds because it's not pretty yep and this is what was happening to Risa Tisa so you know she put out her 50 part story about you know who did she marry and all the crazy hoops and loops that she had to go through through um, she went in through that a marriage lot. and she Man. went through a lot okay um she received yes yeah, she received a lot of love yes yeah, she you know like we said this week she did all these interviews um she also i think she's getting i don't know if she's getting that bmw i think she is getting that bmw okay. that she wanted um she's also getting that trip to paris that she always wanted she's getting it all all expenses paid she's gonna have a great time and okay? well absolutely and well but even with all of this goodness going on there's still hate being pushed her way mm-hmm. and hate being pushed her way from outlets just as big as the ones who, who are giving her praise um so like on the breakfast club they had a uh, um, a discussion about Risa Tisa and everything. And they were saying like, oh my gosh, like that's just such big back activity. You know, just talking about her, all kinds of crazy people online saying things like, oh, there's no way this, ha- this actually happened to her. Look at how she looks. No VP would marry her. No blah, blah, blah would do this and that. Just really throwing hate her way. And I just thought it was really awesome that in the face of all that, she still was standing strong, still was sticking to her guns and was still like, yes, this is my story. Like whether it be cute, ugly or indifferent, like this is my story. This is my truth. And she's reaping, you know, benefits from it, even in the face of ad- adversity and hate. Mm-hmm. Um. So my last question is, how do you stay authentic to yourself and your voice in the face of all that? of um, adversity or do you just have any tips and tricks in general on how to empower yourself and your voice in situations? Mm, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's hard to not stay true to myself. So I really don't know how I stay it because I'm it. Mm. Uh, Hell yeah. I'm it. I'm not new. I'm not new. Right. (laughs) How do I stay? I don't know. I just you just be you just I be. Just, I'm just being me. You know, it's kind of hard to fake it. It's way hard to fake it and 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 try to make it versus just being authentically you. So mm-hmm. I think that's my big thing. Knowing that if I want to put on the front, it's gonna be way harder to try to put on the front versus just being like, "This is me. This is what you get." Yeah. Uh, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, no problem. Move on. Someone else will. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I was looking online. I was trying to see if there were, you know, any tips or tricks or anything. Mm-hmm. They gave some things that I thought were pretty good. Um, you know, things like affirmations, you know, maybe write on a post-it note, like, you know, your voice is important or like what you say matters or, you know, just things to really empower you to really use your voice, use your speech, use your words. Um, you know, maybe you can just, Write some of those throughout the day. You know, maybe you stick it on your window. You know, Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah. being Mary Jane. <laughs> stick them all on your window on, on your uh, and all those kinds of things or whatever. Um, but one that I thought was really good that I was like, huh, I guess that actually does probably help you really regulate and channel your voice is journaling. Oh, yeah, I did that recently. You know, sometimes you do got something to say, but you just don't want to say it right now or maybe it's not even something that you actually want to say out loud maybe it's just a conversation you want to have with yourself or maybe you decide hmm, now that i've had this conversation with myself i think i want to bring it up you mm-hmm. know journaling will really help you with that get you a little book whatever is making you happy sad or whatever in between whip out that book maybe like once a week or something like that just or when you feel it what about the book journal Mm -hmm. talk about how you feel and just write until you got it all out and i think you'll feel better and you'll probably will be more empowered to use your voice not only in writing but in speech i was just talking to my grandma about this yes you were 
I was just telling her how I don't typically journal about the happy things in my life. So, because I have, I was journaling. I was going through mm-hmm. my journal actually, because mm-hmm. I have entries from 2020, 2021, 2022. So I was reading some things back after I had journaled from last week. Because, like I said, last week was a rough week for me. Uh huh. Um, but a lot of it is not great things. <laughs> I, agree, I don't really, yeah. I don't really, I don't really write down my happy moments. Um, and I'm not even gonna say I'm start to try to do it because I really do live in the moment. So. Yeah. If it's making me happy, I feel fulfilled and I have pictures and videos and, mm-hmm. and other things to remember them. Um, I think that's what's beautiful about society now. Like, it's not like I can just, it's not like if I don't write it down, I don't have it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of my happy memories are also captured, whether it's through film, whether it's through video, whether it's through audio, whatever it is, they're already there. So I have them no matter what. So writing them down, um, I don't necessarily need to do it. But a lot of my lows that I don't capture, that I that people don't see, mm-hmm. that um, I'm not just on a podcast talking about, like a lot of my lows, I do write down to get out, mm-hmm. and it helps. But as I was reading my journal, I said, "Damn, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I forgot some shit I went through." I was like, "Damn, yeah, that happened. Damn, that happened. Damn, that happened." <laughs> I was like, "Woo, <laughs> I'm still standing." But um, I do think that that's also a great tool too, right? Whenever you have, if you are, if you're the type of person who does capture a lot of your happy moments and don't necessarily need to write them down, your lows, if you're just sitting with them and not getting them out, they will eat you up. So they get will. them out, write it out, write it out, talk it out with whoever you want to therapy, whatever it is, but get it out. Mm-hmm. Also therapy. Oh, yep. <laughs> Period. Also therapy. Sorry. Also therapy. You know, get you somebody who can help you. Yes. Walk it like you talking. Be your best you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Therapy is that girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, y- y'all, ain't, ooh, y'all ain't ready for me. Watch my watch when I get up in there. Mm. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. I'm going to come up in here. A different biatch. Hey. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's all I have under our umbrella. Just, you know, I just wanted to remind y'all out there. What you have to say is important. Your voice is important and you should be empowered to speak your truth. Even if people ain't going to like what you have to say, okay. you're going to feel say so it. much better after you say it. Do Trust it. me. Um, and yeah, that's all I got today. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We reached the end of the show. We have. Well, thank y'all so much for being here with us. Happy TVU Thursday. Um, make sure that y'all go on over to our YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, and comment all subscribe, over there. Like and comment. Subscribe, like, and comment, and go to the uh, go to the pages on Spotify and Apple and Deezer and Pandora and mm-hmm. everything that we're on Google. Everything, yeah. And write out what you like and star it and download every Get into episode. It, yeah. Do what you need to do your job so we can do our job, okay? Yeah. Take that right now. Do your big one. Do your yeah, big one. Do your big one. Get on your Zoom. Okay. Get on your That's Zoom. That's what I want to see in here from everybody. Yeah. Because the audience is growing. I'm seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> it is. If, if you're listening right now, you might as well go ahead and hit the follow. You might as well go ahead and leave us a review. You know what I'm saying? Leave a voice message. Mm-hmm. And you can even, I mean, we would really prefer and love if you download the episode because that oh, would help it. us so much. Download. Download it. We want to be able to, you know, talk about, oh, yeah, we have like 100,000 downloads this season. Blah, blah, blah. Would love that. Okay. Um, download it. Make sure that y'all tune in to the TBU Season 6 playlist that is on Spotify and Apple as well. And uh, that's all we have this week. We love y'all so much. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and everywhere else at TBU Podcast. You can send us an email, theblackumbrellapc at gmail.com. We love y'all so much. Happy TBU Thursday. And we will talk to y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.